In this short lecture, I will discuss a number of learning theories associated with connected learning and personal learning networks. In this mini lecture, I will be speaking about social configurations for learning, including online communities and online networks, and exploring two social learning theories, network learning and connectivism. When learning in the online space, as in the offline world, people cluster together in various configurations depending upon their context and needs. Two of the configurations which feature strongly in social learning research are communities and networks. Communities and networks are not two different things. Fenger suggests that communities and networks are two aspects of the same social fabric. The threads of networks and communities are interwoven, yet they have different effects on learning potential. A lot of the time, learning communities and learning networks are treated as the same thing, and yet they're quite different. Whether it's online or offline, there are certain aspects that differentiate communities and networks. These features blur across the social structures, so information below is not a set of hard and fast rules, but a set of general features that have been identified of each. Generally, a learning community is formed intentionally by a group of people who know each other. This means they have strong ties, which is another way of saying that they interact regularly and that there's a level of trust between them. Because most members of a community will know each other, when one shares something with the group, it's more likely that this will be reciprocated and others will acknowledge this contribution. The membership of the learning community is known. Even if members don't know each other well, there's generally a sense that everyone is working together towards a shared goal, such as the completion of a course or a task. There are several advantages of learning within a learning community. The most obvious is the sense of security, as members tend to know each other and have a shared language and shared goals, so they're more likely to be supportive of each other. Also knowing each other means that members tend to be mutually accountable. The disadvantages of learning within a community are that it's possible to have an inward focus. Having a shared language and shared goals may become a reason for not wanting to accept outside views. This can sometimes lead to echo chambers, sometimes known as homophily. Learning networks can include members of a community, but networks tend to be more organic undefined and have both strong and weak ties. This means that there will be some members of the network who are known to each other and others who may be unknown. The membership of a network is far more flexible and usually changing all the time. The goals are personal to each individual and while members may work together, they may be working toward different goals. The advantage of this is that the network is there to meet personal needs and by including diverse connections, there's a greater chance of innovation and serendipitous discovery. Unfortunately, a network can include overwhelming amounts of information, which can make it difficult to find a high quality learning amongst the noisy channels. Also, learning through a network can be quite ambiguous, as it's up to the individual to direct and set their own goals and to achieve those goals. Connected learning is a social experience. Based on social constructivism, social learning is explained by John and Anderson, who suggests that learning is not only enhanced and stimulated through reaction, discussion and argument with others, but also that much knowledge confirmation, interpretation, contextualization and validation happens only through interaction with others. Network learning explains how learning takes place in network contexts. Learning used to be analog. It was the transmission of a physical signal from one source to another. To receive this transmission, you had to be tethered, usually to a teacher or the source of information, for example, a book. And this meant you were probably isolated. You had to be within a particular physical setting with the information source right there in order to receive it. Learning was also generic. 
there was one teacher or book for many receivers and the receivers consumed this information and that's what we called learning. It was a closed system. Only the teacher and the learning and perhaps a resource were involved. Network learning describes learning when information and resources are no longer analog. They are digital, represented by a series of zeros and ones. This has a huge influence on how we understand what knowledge is and what learning is. Because digital information is easily replicated, it's no longer limited to one isolated source such as the teacher or the book. It can come via multiple streams and because of mobile technology, we can receive these streams anywhere that we can access the network. The network means we are connected. We can have many people and information sources communicating together at any time and this can be synchronous or asynchronous. Because information is now digital, we can personalise it. Not only is there more information accessible, it can be easily altered or remixed to make it more suitable to our personal needs. For example, when we look at analogue resources, if you had two books and each one had a complicated diagram that you needed to remember, you couldn't cut the paragraph and the diagram out of the books and glue the two diagrams side by side in another book. Because of digital information, we can now copy and paste each diagram, put them into a new document, import them into an app and manipulate them, we can add our own information and notes. This brings us to creation. We can all create and add to digital information and we do, and then we can share it online. Learning can be open in that I can publish my work on a blog and share it with the world and anyone out there may choose to read it. Previously, I may have written the same things but in a diary where no one else except maybe family or friends may have had access. This is what networked learning is. It recognises the context of learning, the information that we access, and the connections that we have to information and to others as all parts of the learning process. Networked learning expands on the social constructivist view of learning by including the mediating role of technology. The aim of network learning is to understand how interactions between the individual's own thinking, their connections within a digitally mediated network, and the learning context influence learning and the learner. Connectivism takes this networked understanding of learning and applies the idea that knowledge rests across multiple nodes within flexible and open networks. Therefore, rather than focus on the individual's interactions, connectivism seeks to explain how the construction of connections allows knowledge to flow through networks. Connectivist learning is considered to be the active process of creating connections between nodes and seeing patterns across connections. Cultivating our connections and developing a diverse network means that we are more likely to consider the widest range of opinions and the most up-to-date information. In connectivism, it is not about what we know, but our capacity to make connections and learn through these connections that is important. There are two interpretations of connected learning. These will be addressed in detail in the Connected Learning Approaches mini lecture. However, both interpretations draw upon social constructivism, network learning and connectivism. They aim to explain how learning happens within connected learning environments where active learners share, curate and produce resources and co-create knowledge on a topic of common interest. These connected learning environments are amplified and enabled by social technologies. Both interpretations of connected learning inform our understanding of how learning might be more authentic, more inclusive and more engaging and meaningful for learners, whether they be engaging in formal or informal learning opportunities. For more information, I would direct you to several of these readings, including the work by John and Anderson in Teaching Crowds, Ito et al. and the Connected Learning Report, 
and George Seaman's original publication on connectivism, a learning theory for the digital age.